do you think those people you quoted as examples are in fact practicing Christians? What I was doing was that, look, you have a problem, which you accept, that you have a problem. No, the, the Christians in England, the Christians in England and in America, and all over the world, you have certain problems. In South Africa, they have certain problems. No, Christians don't have problems. I think this is the problem. This is your problem. Your problem is that you are sort of looking at the culture, assuming because we have a nominal Christian head, that is the Queen, who is the head of the Church of England. I mean, I don't know whether the Queen is a committed Christian. I don't know whether Margaret Thatcher is a committed Christian. I'm, you know, I would be, I'm very concerned that they become committed Christians because they, only then are they able to lead the country. Uh, I think the problem is when you assume that the people you quote as examples, divorces and all this kind of thing, then you uh, are in, on very dangerous water because you're actually condemning people who are, neither, are not Christians at all. Do you understand what I mean? That so now you have an answer. You see, if you are a Christian, which you claim you are, the Queen of England is not, Mrs. Margaret Thatcher probably is not, you are, you see, you are born again. No, no, you are born again. So you believe that you are a Christian, but the rest of this country who fill the census forms, when they asked what religion, they don't say Jew, they don't say Buddhist, they don't say Muslim, they put down Christian. Yes, this is so, so, right, right. So, so what you do is they fill the census form as Christians. The Muslims, when they fill up the forms, they also fill as Muslims. That doesn't mean that they're good Muslims. But if a Muslim does something evil, I can't say he's not a Muslim. You see, it's very easy way out for the Christians. He's not a Christian. I say, well, look, your brother did such and he committed murder. He raped somebody. Sutcliffe was a Muslim, for example. I feel ashamed. I say, well, he was a very bad Muslim. I can't say he's not a Muslim. You can get out very, get off very easily. Say, so look, Margaret Thatcher is not a Christian. Bhutan in South Africa is not a Christian. Regan is not a Christian. Our, the Swagat, you know, he was tantalizing millions on TV. Swagat, and when you heard him, you and every born-again Christian in America, 75 million born again, when they were listening to him, they were adulating him as a Christian. Now when he's caught out, no, and then you say, no, he's not a Christian, because he's caught out now. Sw Swagart got caught out, Jim Baker got caught out, Marvin Gorman, Reverend, has got caught out. So immediately you turn back, he's not a Christian, he's not a Christian, he's not a Christian. Very easy way out. But now you are a Christian, and there are many like you who say you are born again, your new life. I said, right, so now you have to supply the answer, the solution to the problem. You have four million of your sisters which if every Britisher gets married, they can't get husbands. Now, this, you're born again. Now, how do you satisfy the needs of those four million of your sisters and your aunties who can't get husbands? Now, you work that out, and you come back and we listen to you. But if you have to go to the back now. You go to the back. I'd just like to make a suggestion and ask for your comment on it because I think we could argue till we're blue in the face about the, the bad points of what people who are called Christians have done in the past and the bad things that people who call themselves Muslim have done. We could sort of go backwards and forwards like a tennis match with that sort of thing. Um, also, as, but, I mean, so that's, that's, to me, my suggestion is that you've got words in the Bible um, that you accept, like the prophecy that you attach to Muhammad, um, which is weird attached to the Holy Spirit, so another tennis match. No, it's the Holy Spirit, no, it's Muhammad. Um, and then um, you say about the major revisions being changed, but the Bible, I'm, I just want to ask your response to this. I'm not, I'm not a speaker, so it takes me a bit to... <laughs> right, so um, the, the Bible translators uh, use Greek manuscripts that go back to the second century, so another argument that surely you can't say is about that the Bible is revised since the King James in 1611 five times, so it can't be true anymore, because the, the more that they revise it, this century they've found more manuscripts that go further back, and they use these Greek manuscripts and compare it all like these boffins do. So the, the question is, um, how can you know um, 
what is the truth by, by this sort of arguing, because the third caliph, apparently, from what I've read, also had influence on the compiling of the Quran. You know, sort of, he had a, a book, a Quran that had been, um, his wife had had under the bed or something. Then there was other writings that were starting to get circulated, apparently. And the third caliph got it together and said, right, we've got to make a final Quran and decide what's going to be the, the true word. So, uh, surely, the only way that we can really know which is the true book is not to say, to, from our own background, well, I'm a Christian, so I'm going to say this, and you say, well, I'm a Muslim, so I'm going to believe this. Surely, it's to get both books, sit down with both of them, and to say, God, the true God, please speak to me. Read both of them and just ask God to show you. Surely that's the only way. I don't think we could argue to a blue in the face, but, you know, I can say that I love you because Jesus put love in me. So that's the answer for the world. Um, and you could say this and that and the other, but surely what's your response to that? But to sort of get both books and say, God, which is the truth, instead of sort of arguing that the Bible's been changed. Yeah, they've got second century manuscripts, yeah. And the third caliph changed the Quran, you yeah. know. Maybe. No. Uh, no. I'll finish that. So what, what's your response to that? Is, is that surely the only answer is to just pray instead of using all these arguments surely it's to just pray I mean, what do you think of what you see you have been telling us in so many words that let us take these two books and start reading them both and allow god to tell you from heaven so look this is not the book of god but this is not the bible but the quran and you will listen you will listen to that god if the god you hear the voice from heaven telling you he said look this bible is not the book of god this is according to Bernard Shaw, your great man, George Bernard Shaw, you know the playwright. He said, this is the most dangerous book on earth. He said, keep it under lock and key. Your children must not have access to it. That's what he said, George Bernard Shaw. The Plain Truth magazine, you know, Christian magazine coming from America, seven to eight million a month free copies are being given out. They say that many a censor will give it an X rating. I don't want to go into all that. We went through all this on Sunday. But now, you know the guy who talks about God telling him, Marvin Gorman, you know the Marvin Gorman in America, televangelist, that is what he claimed, God talks to him. Marvin Gorman, Reverend Marvin Gorman, he was caught for adultery and he was defrocked by his church. Jim Becker, God speaks to him. Jimmy Swaggart in his works, if you ever read them, he says, God speaks to him, he says, my son, my son, and he's telling him what to do and what not to do. But this God Almighty didn't tell him not to go to a prostitute twice a week, twice a month, you know, and what he was doing there. So, the people who are talking about God talking to them, there's some type of sickness. They need psychiatrist. The guy who says, now God, because God doesn't talk like that. He doesn't come to you every Tom, Dick, and Harry and tells him, say, not this book, but that book. If he was doing that, he would have done it to everybody. Everybody would have followed Christ.